We have a little bit of time for an audience question. Does anybody currently have a question? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Ramon Jackson. Uh, currently, we're building an IoT device uh, using blockchain for luxury brands. And my question is pricing. Uh, how do you figure out what price to set? And how do you figure out what price people are willing to pay? And how do you avoid the trap of underpaying or underselling yourself? Okay. Yeah. So. That's a very interesting question. So I want to do something, uh, and then I want to make a point. So everyone in here is familiar with, um, let's say Alexa, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's familiar with Alexa. So I want to just do something, and then I'll get, I'll dive into the question. Uh, so I'm going on Alexa on my phone. I don't know if you guys have it, but I'm, I'm going to go to Alexa, and I'm just going to ask Alexa a question about my brand. Yeah. Alexa, open billionaires row. row you can ask about best champagne restaurants and resorts what are the best champagnes in the world billionaires row champagne is considered the best champagne in the world second cru clos du menil blanc de blanc brut third salon cuvées le menil blanc de blanc thank you alexis so i'll just and then i'll dive into the whole so you're in the tech space which is really genius because Technology is driving our, our market. And so to really understand how to price a product, you really have to understand your consumer and the marketplace, right? So uh, one, we know that technology is moving into voice, right? Everything that you see around you is voice. You ask your Alexa, your Siri, your Bigsby questions is 3.5 times faster than typing it. So let's say you say, hey, Alexa, order pizza at 6 p.m. for my kids. They'll know Domino's pizza at your house. You want to order champagne, it may request a billionaire champagne, puts it in your checkout. You want Whole Foods, it puts it in the, in the basket, puts it in there. All that stuff cuts costs when you're building out from a technology standpoint perspective. When you're going to a physical retail big box perspective, price point goes up. In fact, statistically, it's more expensive to deliver Coca-Cola than it is to make it, right? So you must under, want to understand your consumer. Um, uh, so to answer your question, uh, depends on <coughs> Uh, scalability, what the cost is to make the actual product, because coding is ex ex expensive, depending on what you're creating. Uh, if it's a luxury good product, such as, as, as my brand, um, my suggested retail price in a retail store is $150 a bottle for the champagne, but it's $800 a bottle in Club Live in Miami. Um, it's $800 a bottle in Tate in London. Uh, so it just depends on what market you're in. and. Uh, South Africa and Nigeria, the product is, uh, is uh, interesting because Nigerians and South Africans spend more money than any other race in the world on premium champagne. In fact, they're number one in the world and most people don't know that because no one spotlights the fact that Africans and African Americans spend the most money on premium champagne. And so one of the reasons why I got into this space is because I saw that, that void and I knew I could exploit it based on me understanding the Gen X and the Millennials and understanding also that half of the planet is at the average age of 55 years old. The other half is at the average age of 18. So I knew if I could get these 17 to 18 year old consumers which all globally drink legally eight, at the age of 18, then I could control the market in the next five to 10 years. So just understanding where you wanna be, how to position your brand, who's gonna consume your product, right? My, you know, Moet is not the same price as Billionaire's or Champagne. Bel Air Rosé isn't champagne, but it's not. It's just sparkling wine, but it's a you know it's price point. It's cheaper to make, so you know. So understanding who your consumer is and uh, locking in and just under, understanding what your scalability is, right? I understand that getting on Alexa, being on Alexa, I have access to three billion people, right, globally. But in Manhattan, I only have access to four million people, right? So I know that I'm going to reach a cap in New York, or I'm gonna reach a cap at selling to 300 million people in America. But if you wanna build wealth, you have to look at scalability from a global perspective, where you can touch billions of users and billions of people. So just look at it from that perspective. And you may have another follow-up question. I, I'm sorry, I have a follow-up question. So what are you doing in terms of, so we're talking about loneliness, but how, how is it affecting you? Like, what are you doing to, to sort of get rid of that feeling? Mm -hmm. well, I guess. Sometimes you just go in a room and just cry, because 
If you want to be disruptive and be a pioneer of industry and you want to make change and create new uh, bridges for people to cross that are of your likeness or from your walking or background, uh, there's no one that's going to believe in you in the beginning. So you have to go in it with duck skin and know that people are going to talk about you behind your back. People are going to look at you funny. Mm -hmm. People are going to say things to you. People are going to smile on your face and be two-faced and see it's all cool. It's, look, we understand that we have to be around a bunch of people that are white or that are light or darker white to make more money mm -hmm. because they control 90% of, of the wealth in America. And we only control 2% of it. So if we want to go in and bridge the gap, which is a 280-year gap, we need to rub shoulders. Yep. And now it's not who you know, it's who knows you. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the room, it's, for me, I'm willing to die behind what I've created. And that's how you have to feel. You have to feel like you're Martin Luther King. You have to feel like you're Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. At any moment, you're creating something that you want to, to, you want to have to change the world something that you want to create that's going to live on after you, yeah. you have to be willing to, you know, you have to put on that face, but when you go in the room, it's okay to break down with your friends and your family, the people so that yeah. love you. And it may only be one or two people, but, but that's, all, that's you all you need. Mary, can we like, clap for the collective? Yeah.